In 10,191, people traveled far into space and created four big space countries under Emperor Shaan, led by powerful families. Among all the planets they own, there's one called Arrakis, a desert planet with a very tough climate. But Arrakis is special because it has precious spices that are very helpful for space travelers. These spices make Arrakis very important, and everyone wants to control it. This makes Arrakis the center of fights and power struggles in the universe. The film begins with a woman named Chani, Peter's lover in the Spider-Man movie, who is a resident of Arrakis. She says that for all this time, a noble family named Harkonnen, even long before she was born, controlled the planet, making Harkonnen incredibly wealthy, even wealthier than the Emperor himself. However, the Harkonnens are very cruel towards the Arrakis people, leading them to try to attack them. But all of it is in vain because the Harkonnens have a powerful elite force. One day, the Emperor suddenly ordered the Harkonnens to leave Arrakis, but Chani was sure that the Emperor would send someone else who would oppress the people of Arrakis just as the Harkonnens had done. The scene shifts to another planet ruled by a noble named Duke Leto Atreides, who is the leader of the Atreides family. A young man named Paul, the sole prince of the Atreides, suddenly wakes up after experiencing a disturbing dream. Paul has a mother named Lady Jessica, who is also a member of an extraordinary women's organization called the Ben Gesserit. This organization has special powers, allowing them to influence others with their words, which they call the voice. Jessica has taught Paul all the knowledge she has learned from the Ben Gesserit because Paul has unique abilities that enable him to see the future and other powers that are still hidden within him. One day, members of a political group called the Lansra, representing all the noble families, suddenly come to visit them to deliver an important message from the highest emperor. In the message, the emperor instructs Leto Atreides and all his forces to go to Arrakis to replace the Harkonnens in mining the spice. During the meeting, Jessica notices that a woman, a member of the Ben Gesserit, is watching Paul, making Jessica feel uneasy. After the meeting, Leto asks several elite troops to prepare because they will soon be sent to Arrakis as spies. Paul tries to warn one of his best warriors, a close friend, Duncan Idaho. Paul had dreamed of his death while in Arrakis. However, Duncan tries to reassure Paul, confident that he will be fine because he is not a weak soldier. Paul then sought his father's permission to accompany Duncan to Arrakis. However, Leto refused, citing Paul as the sole hope for the future of the Atreides family. Leto understood that the Emperor was creating a scenario for the Atreides to conflict with the Harkonnens, as some nobles strongly desired the Atreides to lead as Emperor on the planet Arrakis. Leto planned to ally with the native people of Arrakis, known as the Fremen, to bolster military strength and liberate the people of Arrakis from colonization. Paul began to train his combat skills with one of Leto's men, Gertie Halleck. They utilized a device resembling a bracelet designed to create a transparent protective layer over their bodies, minimizing injury during combat. Halleck advised Paul to remain vigilant on Arrakis, warning of the Harkonnens' ruthlessness in pursuing their desires. Meanwhile, on the planet Chidi Prime, home of the Harkonnen family, Baron, the leader of the Harkonnens, and his nephew Glossa Rabin discussed their dislike over the Emperor's grant of power to the Atreides. Rabin asked the Emperor's true intentions, but Baron reassured him that this was merely the beginning. Elsewhere, Jessica abruptly woke Paul, instructing Dr. Wellington Yu to check Paul's vital signs. Confused, Paul inquired about the situation. It turned out that an executive from the Ben Gesserit, Gaius Helen Moham, had arrived to determine if Paul was the expected chosen one they had long awaited. Helen tested Paul by having him insert his hand into a box, a test which Paul passed, indicating he possessed a significant latent power within him. Then after Helen left, Jessica told Paul that the Ben Gesserit had controlled the government silently. In short, Leto and the entire Atreides family finally arrived in Arrakis, accompanied by their best warriors. However, unknown to them, they were welcomed very well by the Fremen because they believed that Paul was the chosen one who could save them from misery. After Paul and the others felt more comfortable in their new home, Paul tried to learn about Arrakis, including the sandworms that could grow up to 400 meters long. The sandworms seemed very attracted to sound, so the Fremen often used a technique called sand walking that could mimic the sound of rustling sand as they walked in the desert. As Paul was focusing on his studies, a killer insect suddenly emerged from within the walls, attempting to attack him. However, in the end, Paul managed to catch the insect. It turned out that the controller of the insect was a spy from Harkonnen who had been buried in the walls for six weeks just to carry out the task of killing Paul. Furious about the incident, Leto ordered someone to search for another spy immediately as he was responsible for the safety of the entire Leto family. On the other hand, Helen visited Baron to deliver a message from the Emperor stating that the Emperor would provide some of his troops to increase Baron's strength. Moreover, Helen noted Baron was free to kill anyone except Jessica and Paul because they were under the protection of Ben Gesserit. Initially, Baron agreed to Helen's request, but when Helen left, he intended to kill them by throwing them to the giant sandworms. 
Back in Arrakis, after Paul and the others finished their meeting, they finally met with Duncan, who had just returned from his mission. Duncan then told them about the group of Fremen called Syops and their leader Stilver. Later, after Leto and Stilver met, Leto promised that as long as he led Arrakis, he would never hunt the Syops as Baron had before. The next day, Leto, Paul, and the others intended to observe the workers harvesting spices in the desert. However, before that, they met with an ecologist from the Empire and a Fremen named Dr. Lee Kynes. He was tasked with checking the suits they were wearing because they were special, capable of converting sweat into drinkable water. Thus, besides protecting from the heat, the suits also helped prevent dehydration. Then, once ready, they continued their journey until they found a machine used for spice extraction. But when they saw a sandworm heading towards the machine, for some reason, the equipment usually used to transport the machine suddenly broke. Therefore, they planned to evacuate everyone inside the machine. As the sandworm hurried towards them, Paul tried to escape the aircraft and directed the workers to leave immediately. However, he accidentally inhaled the spice from the sand. Suddenly, Paul began to have strange visions, causing him to lose consciousness. Seeing this, Halleck immediately went to pick up Paul. But as the sandworm was too close, they struggled while running on the sand. Eventually, they all managed to get on the aircraft while the giant sandworm exhausted the spice harvester. Later, when they were at home, Paul recounted all his dreams about a Fremen woman named Chani to his mother. Additionally, he saw his mother holding a baby with blue eyes like the Fremen. Hearing this, Jessica was very fearful of what would happen to them in the future. Meanwhile, on the planet Seleucus Secundus, where the Emperor was located, the troops were preparing because they would soon depart for Arrakis along with the Harkonnen forces to wage war against the Atreides forces. Even though they knew that the Atreides forces were powerful, they didn't care because they had far more troops than the Atreides clan. In the evening, when Leto realized that someone had killed the guards, suddenly a killer insect attacked his back until it finally managed to penetrate his armor and paralyze Leto instantly. It turned out that Dr. Yu had leaked information to Baron all this time. He was forced to do this because Baron had kidnapped and tortured his wife, so if he was willing to do anything to save her. Even so, Dr. Yu gave Leto a chance by replacing his teeth with false teeth that could emit poison so that Leto could kill the Baron by blowing the poison at him. Soon after, their aircraft began to be bombed with bombs that could penetrate armor, leaving Halleck and the other troops waiting for the enemy forces to arrive and trying to fight them on the ground. But in the end, they began to fall one by one because the enemy forces were much more numerous than the Atreides forces. On the other hand, after Duncan managed to defeat several enemy troops, he tried to find Leto, Paul, and Jessica. However, since he couldn't find any of them, he eventually left the area using a Dragonfleet aircraft he'd caught from the Harkonnen troops. Meanwhile, Paul and Jessica, who were being arrested by Harkonnen troops, finally managed to free themselves by using their voice powers, causing the troops to start attacking each other. They intended to return home but the entire place had turned into a sea of fire, so they decided to hide behind the sand. However, because Paul inhaled too much of the spice, he began to have visions of himself fighting in a holy war occurring throughout the universe. On the other side, when Dr. Yu asks Baron to release his wife, Baron kills him instead because he doesn't care about Dr. Yu at all. Then, as he approached the paralyzed Leto, suddenly, Leto released a poisonous breath that had been given to him by Dr. Yu, filling the entire room with a deadly poison. The event killed all of Baron's troops in the room. However, Baron managed to survive because he had activated his armor beforehand. Meanwhile, when Paul and Jessica came out of hiding, Duncan finally found them both. So, he apologized for not being able to protect Leto or the others. Then, as a sandstorm approached, they and Dr. Kynes tried to take shelter from the storm in an old station that had once been used for ecological testing. However, unbeknownst to them, the Sardukur troops had discovered their location. So, Duncan tried to hold off the Sardukur troops so Paul and the others could escape. With all his abilities, Duncan defeated several soldiers until he was hit by an attack and died. Meanwhile, Paul and the others managed to find a way out, but since the aircraft on the evacuation route was only enough for two people, Dr. Kynes told Paul and Jessica to go first. Dr. Kynes then activated a thumper to attract the sandworm towards him. Unfortunately, the Sardaukar troops managed to stab him from behind. Unbeknownst to them, suddenly they began to be sucked into the sand until, eventually, they were all eaten alive by the giant sandworm. On the other hand, Paul and Jessica tried to escape from the pursuit of the Sardokar troops until they were forced to enter a sandstorm that was traveling at 800 kilometers per hour. With Paul's abilities, both managed to get out of the storm safely. Unfortunately, the aircraft they were using was severely damaged, so they had to survive on a vast expanse of sand. Using his vision, Paul finally finds the way to where Stilver is. However, even though they were using the sand walking technique, they accidentally stepped on a sand trap set by the Freeman Descent. So they both had to run as fast as they could towards the rocks nearby because the sandworm began to chase them. Then, when the worm showed itself in front of Paul, someone suddenly sounded a thumper, so the worm went towards it instead. Not long after that, Paul and Jessica finally found Stilger's whereabouts. 
However, because Stilger thought Jessica was an old, weak woman, he tried to duel with her, but he didn't know that Jessica also had combat skills, so Jessica easily defeated Stilgar. After that incident, Stilgar finally believed them and tried to take them to the hiding place. However, one of the Fremen members refused to accept this decision, thus challenging Paul to a duel following Fremen tradition, where the loser must lose his life. Using a knife given by Chani, Paul attempts to duel with the Fremen. Although he was superior in the fight, Paul did not want to kill the Fremen as he had never killed anyone with his own hands before. However, when he receives a vision that he will die if he does not let go of his past, Paul is forced to kill the Fremen, even though he does not want to do so. After the fight, the Fremen believe that Paul is the chosen one. And as they were on their way to the hideout, they saw a Fremen riding a sandworm, which they considered a power of the desert. But even so, Chani says that all of this is just the beginning because they have many other things that will come. Then the film ends.